morning, my beautiful friends. Welcome back. I am so excited for today's video because major steps forward, literally and figuratively, are being taken forward today. So first of all, today is my birthday, which is pretty cool. Second of all, today is the day that we are headed up to Denver to get fitted for my prosthetic leg. So they took the casting last week, which I will put a link up to above. I videoed the whole thing, so you can check it out there if you wanna hear that story. But then today, I am going to meet my leg. We'll get introduced, and I'm gonna ask you guys to help me name him or her. I mean, once we meet them, then we'll kind of get a better idea of what their name is, you know what I mean? And anyway. I'm gonna take you guys through the day of getting ready, what I kind of do to set up, get ready. Then we're gonna go up there and see if I actually get to walk again for the first time, if I get to put any pressure in it, which would be really, 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 really awesome. And is also anxiety producing, but I'll get to that in a second. And real quick, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll ask you guys questions there that will then get into videos. So definitely check it out if you're on Instagram. Ask what questions you had about the prosthetics process. So I am gonna be answering those throughout this video and definitely a lot more at the end. Real quick, if you're new here, just a little bit of backstory. So this is not the first prosthetic leg I've gotten. I had my leg amputated about six months ago now. It's crazy that it's been that long. And you initially get casted about four to six weeks after. You start kind of walking about four to six weeks after, you know, learning slowly and surely, but I had some major issues develop. I had a bad fall in a restaurant and then that led to bursts developing, which are really painful. I mean, you basically can't put any pressure on your leg until they go away but mine never went away and I eventually had to have surgery on March 28th. That went uh, hopefully well. I mean, we'll kind of find out in the process of, of going through this. And so there's been a lot of setbacks, a lot of delays. I'm a little gun shy, like I'm a little nervous about this whole process now because I'm so just, I so want this to go right. But I'm also working on trying to be patient and understand that, you know, maybe small setbacks will happen, but gosh darn it, I really hope I get to like at least bring my leg home today, if nothing else. Without further ado, let's dive into this day, guys. So I'm gonna drink some coffee while I get ready for this trip because there's actually some things that I have to remember every time. Like my right shoe, I've gotten very used to only wearing one shoe and it's really important that you bring your other shoe, put on your prosthetic leg so you can actually practice walking because it's important that you know that you have shoes on both feet when you're actually trying out your prosthetic. I'm gonna try to remember my shoe, I have to remember my liner, I have to remember, well I'm gonna remember my shrinker because it's on my leg, can't really see it but it's on my leg right now. Um, so it's important that I bring up like all those parts and pieces, but they have my actual leg up there right now. Can I pour this while looking at you guys? We're not gonna try it, that's too dangerous. Also, if this is your first time to the channel and you see me walking around, you're like, why do you need to get a prosthetic leg if you're walking? I'm walking on this puppy. It's basically like a walking crutch. Something else that is really important to remember is stretchy clothes, like shorts because of how your leg is actually put on because of the liner and then what goes over the liner and everything. I cannot put it on wearing the jeans I have on right now, but I want to look nice, you know, for like later in Denver when we go out to dinner. So I have to remember to actually bring like a full change of clothes. Otherwise, I'd be trying on my prosthetic without any pants and we just can't let that happen. I guess they probably provide a hospital gown, but that's just as, that's just as embarrassing. <laughs> so here we have the liners. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one inside out to keep it from collecting all the dog hair in the house. This is like the side covered in aloe vera and it's kind of mushy, sticky, moist. No one likes that word. Almost forgot one of the most vital elements, which is socks. So some people don't wear socks with their shoes. I mean, I generally do, but I've forgotten to bring socks up before with just like slip on shoes. And that takes grown, very strong men a really long time to try to get a prosthetic foot into a shoe without a sock on it. I've learned that the hard way because of like the consistency of it, it sticks to the shoe. And so you have to pull that thing on. And like, I physically can't do it. So socks are a lifesaver. Also, do you like my calendar? I'm kind of obsessed with chickens. So now I'm gonna change into shorts from jeans so I can actually put on my hopefully leg. Um, so just uh, downward pressure's okay, but just don't like throw it back in. Got it. So the initial fitting was a little bit too tight, and so since this is the check socket, they can actually take it back and stretch things out more. So that's what they're doing, and we're gonna we're gonna try again.
fantastic, but I'm hoping that we'll get there. So I think overall the appointment probably went well. Walking away, I feel a little bit apprehensive. It's terrifying. <laughs> Denver traffic sucks. <laughs> So if you've been around this channel for a while, uh, the first time I got fitted for a prosthetic, it actually felt pretty natural, like it, it fit pretty well. And this one I think <laughs> might fit well, it's just super painful, it's really uncomfortable. And it's not even in one spot, it's like the whole thing hurts, and so I don't know if that's just from post-surgery, or if that's specific issues like with the prosthetic leg itself. Ta-da! All right guys, so she is home. I have successfully determined that this this leg is a girl. Our previous friend, the other leg, Christopher Walken, may he rest in peace, is now deceased. But she needs a leg name. So take a look, learn a little bit about her personality. I mean, we'll see her in the next coming videos, but leave a comment of what you think I should name her down below. Points for funny or ironic names. All right, so we got home safely last night. Today is the next morning, and I wanted to cover some of the questions you guys had and also kind of go over just a recap and sort of what I'm, I'm feeling about everything. So over on Instagram, by the way, I love everyone who actually answered this post. I really appreciate your participation. You guys asked some really good questions. And and obviously by far one of the most important ones is toenail polish. Can you can you paint the nails? Thanks Anais for the win for that one. Yes, actually you can. On the particular kind of foot I have, I'm not gonna take the shoe off right now because it's like a production to put it back on, but I actually can paint the toenails of this foot. Now I don't know how to actually take the toenail polish off just yet. I'm not gonna like do that. I'm not gonna commit to a color for the next three years until I know that I can take it off, but you can paint the toenail. Also side note, you can also wear sandals because it has a split big toe. Not like the big, the big toe isn't split in half. Yeah. like the big toe and the toe next to it are room for sandals is what I'm trying to say. Emily Sue asks, what happens to old prosthetics when you're fitted for new ones? So you get to keep them. For instance, this is actually just a new socket. So like this part down here is the same part I had on my other leg, except they made modifications. Like they changed the suction so that it's not as aggressive, so it won't hurt my leg so much. But this socket is totally different. So I have the old socket sitting downstairs. Basically you get to keep your parts, you paid for them. I have friends who have like closets of old legs, which is pretty crazy. Ryan Palmer asks, does it have lasers? I haven't had this one fitted with lasers, swords, and cool blades just yet, but just you wait, it will. Wongi Thunder asks, how does your stump feel in such a confined space? Like, does it get all sweaty and stuff? So it definitely can. Um, it definitely like will get sweaty and stuff like that. And that's fun to talk about, isn't it? If you're walking for an extended period of time or if you're, you know, overheated because it's it's basically in like this rubber tube, you know, it's like covered in aloe vera and stuff that's good for your leg, but still it gets, it gets pretty gross. It does not smell great in there. It's definitely a weird feeling. It's like there's so much pressure around that entire part of my leg. And right now it's kind of hard to tell the difference just because so much of the pressure was painful pressure. Also something I forgot to note that I was talking to my prosthetist about at the end of the appointment was that walking in it brought back a lot of the phantom pain. Like as I had pressure on it, I felt like my toes were cramping. I felt like my ankle was cramping, which was odd, but I guess makes sense as you're stimulating those nerves those nerves do funny things, so I mean that's part of it too. Oh, good question from Ryan at Cowboy. Um, how does it compare to learning on the iWalk? Polar opposite. You can learn to walk, you can learn to walk on the iWalk in like two minutes. Maybe a little bit longer, I mean like you've got to learn the balance, that takes a, a little bit, but learning to walk on a prosthetic leg is a totally different ball game. Um, your body is adjusting to everything because it literally becomes like your leg, right? And so your balance is entirely different and your core strength is entirely different. It's just not comfortable yet. Anyways, it's gonna take a little while for it to feel comfortable, you know? And I walk, you can just like strap on, strap off, no big deal, but you can't do that with this. It's a little bit more of a process, but it's way more effective because it actually works like a leg. I have a knee, I can bend. It is much better long-term. I walk is simply, think of it like crutches. It's just a walking crutch. This is actually a leg for life. Hop Along Jay asks, what kind of foot are you getting? So I am, like I said, I'm sticking with the same foot. This is the Osser Pro Flex XC Torsion Ball, if I got that right, or Osher, I'm not sure. So it has like this, this piece right here, right? And that allows for even more movement. It's a really active leg, which I'm really excited about. Once I get up and running, up and moving on it, I'll be able to do a lot of hiking, a lot of pivoting. It's really good for like normal movement or as close to normal movement as you can mimic with a prosthetic leg. So that's the kind of leg that I did choose to stick with. Last thing, there are a variety of ways that this can actually fit to your body. There's like a pin lock system where there's basically like a metal rod that'll come out of the liner that sticks to your leg that then like clicks into your actual new leg that then suctions onto you. Obviously that's not the system I have because I don't explain it very well, but the kind of system I have now is passive suction. Previously I had a vacuum hose that was attached, so it was like actively pulling air out, which is a much tighter fit. 
But considering my situation, considering my leg, considering the pain I have, that's not a great idea. They can always add it on later. So right now it's passive, meaning that like as they put pressure in, it'll allow air out, but it won't really allow it to flood back in. So it's still a tight fit without like really suctioning on there, if that makes sense. Thank you for coming with me on this journey to pick up my new leg and to try it out on my birthday. I am legitimately so excited to show you guys like the process of learning to walk again and using it at home for the first time, which I'll do later today. I'll stay tuned for that video. I am so thrilled to like actually be holding this and, and taking those first steps, but it's also really difficult because there's still a lot of unknowns. I still, um, like it just doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel great, you know, and it's not discomfort, it's like pain. And so like, how far should I push it? You know, is the fit wrong? Is just something with my leg not right? Do I just need to heal more? So there's a lot of questions, but I'm just going to take it slow and steady. I talked to my counselor this morning for a while. She really helped me process through a lot of the emotions that I was feeling. And I feel like I can take this bit by bit, at least in this moment. So thank you for spending a few minutes of your day here with me, guys. I appreciate it more than you know. You're wonderful. Your love and your support in my journey means the world to me. And I can never thank you enough. So thanks, guys. I love you. I'm thinking about you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.